Yes, it is the Champagne Rugby Podcast. We are back for 2024. What a time to be alive. It is me, Tony Lyle, joined again with James McConey. James, how's it going, big fella? Yeah, not too bad. Uh, it's been a, a busy few weeks, really, and building up to Super Rugby. Um, I got criticised for talking about Super Rugby on the radio the other day. A mate of mine said, why aren't you talking about the New Zealand Grand Prix? You and know? why weren't you? Exactly, it's a good point. I had my phone on um, uh, on uh, flight mode accidentally. You know, you have to you have to put it on sleep mode at night, mm-hmm. and it, for some reason went on on flight mode. So I missed his text telling me to talk about what's the guy's name? Someone skates won the um, won the NZ Grand Prix. I know this is a rugby show, but yeah, I know. We give him a shout out. Off topic. Why don't we give him a shout out? Someone uh, skates. Yeah, good old skatesy. Skatesy McGee. He is loving the New Zealand Grand Prix. My mate's abusing me in the in the meantime, going. FFS, call yourself a sports journalist. Well, it does seem early to be talking about rugby, yeah. and it certainly was hot. We uh, covered a preseason game, you and I, and ACC head G Lane on Friday, and it was sweltering out there. It almost seemed like it wasn't quite rugby time, but nonetheless, it is underway. Rugby is back. We're about to kick into the Super Rugby season. Wait, before we kick in, congratulations to Liam Skeets for winning the New Zealand Grand Prix at the weekend, a race that's been won by some of the greats, Bruce Mc- McLaren, Jackie Stewart, Jack Brabham, Sterling Moss, KK Rosberg. I missed Sterling name Moss but a few. I met Sterling Moss. Did you? Oh, tell me about that. Well, I think it was him. It could be anyone now that I'm thinking about it. Really having some doubts that it was actually Sterling Moss that I met. Uh, but I certainly went to a garage in Pukekohe and met an old guy who used to race cars. And I feel like it was Sterling That's Moss. That's not Sterling Moss. It could have been anyone. That could have been anyone. It might have been, uh, depending on the year... Yeah, I'd, I'd say it's, 2023. Sterling Moss oh, could no, be long Sterling to see. Moss, no, no, I don't think there's no way. Okay, well, sorry, Sterling Moss. I've never met you, but I would like to one day, unless he is the same. He died in 2020. Yeah, no, almost and he's certainly. a British race car driver. Yeah, okay, forget about that. I must have met some other guy for you. <laughs> Dave, Dave, someone it, else. It can't even be Possum Bourne because he passed away as well. Yeah, he's And dead. he's a Pukekohe, right? Yeah, he's gone. Yeah, I'll find out who that is and we can report back in the next episode of the Rugby Podcast that you're tuning okay. into. But very exciting. I'm excited to be back. I feel like there's been some good results in the preseason, uh, mainly for the Highlanders who managed to go through the whole preseason undefeated. And a lot of people will say, hey, preseason doesn't mean anything. They're trialing out all sorts of combinations and there's a thousand people on the park. But I say to that, who cares? The Highlanders won the preseason. Yeah, they did. Can you talk us through how good your Highlanders are? Are they your team? I, f- I feel you're from Blenheim, but you care about the Landers, don't yeah, you? Yeah, I'm a big Highlanders guy. Um, shocked that you didn't know that already, to be honest. Uh, shows a real lack of insight. I've spent a couple of years on this podcast. I focus and... on, on your Marlborough roots, I guess. You yeah, know? the Century 21 Marlborough Red Devils, they are the team that I do the most, yeah. but they don't, they're not a team anymore. It's now they've been absolved into the Tasman Marco. Up, go to Marco, fins up. Uh, so the Highlanders, yeah, that's my super rugby team. It was after a stint in Dunedin where I was obviously raised to be a Crusaders fan as everyone in Marlborough is sort of, yes, you're sucked into that ecosystem. But after sort of seeing the light of Dunedin, I thought, you know what, there's a better way than just watching a team relentlessly win. You, it's nice to support a team that's the underdog, you know. So, so tell me about the Highlanders preseason, the good things, the, the Falau Whakatawa factor, yep. which I heard that he's been outstanding uh, Billy Harmon, of course, is kind of the heart and soul of that team. He is. They they love a sort of captain on the flank or on the on the loose forwards at the very least, who really just epitomises the grafter down there for the Highlanders. The battler, like very rarely do they ever make the All Blacks or, or crack on. Hopefully, Billy Harmon will at some stage, but he really is that sort of Shane Christie type character that everyone gets around uh, and really, you know, your nacho these sort of guys. Everyone seems to love and get behind and just watch him go to war week after week and smash his head into rucks. Can we call him Grievous Billy Harmon this year? Grievous Billy, Billy Harmon. Harmon, yeah. Yeah, Grievous Billy Harmon, yeah, I like I it. Yeah, can we, Grievous yeah. Bodily Harmon? I think we can go Grievous Bodily Harmon, but his name is Billy. It's very close. It is very close. Yeah, yeah, it's right. It's <laughs> so close anyway. Yeah, um, and Sean Withy, of course, as well. He's sort of matured into, I think he's captain in the side as well. They're, I have a co-captain. I'm not going to put it out there. I'm not a big fan of the co-captain model that a lot of the teams sort of have taken up since the Chiefs were so successful with it. Well, the Chiefs have said it's just Luke Jacobson, right? Mm. They've gone, nah, we've got one captain uh, to rule them all. Uh, poor old uh, Blues, Patrick Tupolotu, who you interviewed the other day. Oh, yes. It gave you some good information. He's not uh, requiring uh, requiring a an operation. There's no... Is there wiring? There's no wiring? No wiring currently, no. It's just healing. He broke his jaw in a friendly fire, I think, in a line-out drive, a big head to the face. 
by Adrian Choate. Oh, the Choate, he's coming hot yeah. and smash him in the head. It is, it is Choate-like behaviour as well to smash a guy in the face when you're not expecting it with a Choate. Just angry, isn't he? Um, also, the problem with forming a mall is you're generally forming it with other forwards, right? And um, they don't really give a shit when they're, when they're in the zone, No, right? they're idiots. They yeah. sort of roll they, the eyes back and yeah. just smash their heads. They're kind of like those goats that smash each other's heads mm. from far. That's me pretending to be two goats butting heads. Yeah. Except they're probably about the same level of intelligence, just to really rip on the forwards. <laughs> Take that, you bastards. No, but there is a uh, Falafa Katava. He scored a try in that win against the Crusaders. I think they won, oh, I have it here actually, 41-14, which is a pretty decent preseason win and again you can't get carried away and think wow is this our year well the crusaders have sort of done that they, they, they went on a big northern tour they didn't take dog roll with them mm. who was their captain scott barrett and then they um they're also working out who the first five is going to be because richie wong is gone obviously and uh the ferg burger fergus burke was supposed to at least just you know pick up where he left off and as the um, the guy, you know, the most trusted sort of deputy, if you like, but giving him, giving him the keys. And now he's gone for a few weeks. So I'm guessing it's from my hometown. Can we play Bruce Springsteen here, please, Joe? Thank you. Um, is uh, Taha Kemera. He's running the cutter for the Satyrs. Well, I can't say I've heard much about him. Can you inform us anything more about Taha? He's from Te Aumutu. Uh, he is. Um, he went to Hamilton Boys High and was part of one of their really good teams where... He was the first five, the, the little general. He's gone down to Canterbury. And then, um, and uh, you know what it's like. The, you sort of think Razor spotted him and just went, well, we'll have a bit of him. But there, there might be another first five in the mix down there, but I'm looking for Taha to, be, to make the start, which is kind of exciting because for a town like Te Aumutu, we've had yeah, we had John O'Gibbs. That was a, that was a big deal. And then uh, Bruce Rayhana as well. So we were like, oh, yeah, we're on fire. There's mm. going to be more and more Te Aumutu kids playing super rugby all the freaking time. And then suddenly we get another one, Josh Morby, and he bloody goes down to the Canes. And now Taha's gone to the freaking Crusaders. Well, that's not like the Crusaders to sort of pillage talent from all over the show and then yeah. try to pass them off as homegrown. As if they like, oh, we spotted them early, so we've got a good eye for it. And you're like, no, you just raid the best players consistently and constantly. And take them down to the factory, the absolute pipeline that is Crusaders rugby. Can I maybe even mention someone, Razor as a, as a talent spotter, is just without peer. He is amazing. He got uh, Fetu Kamal Kamal Douglas, who used to be Fetu Douglas. He goes, nah, put in the Kamal Kamal. Yeah. Kamal. You know, he, we want the full Douglas. And so Fetu went down there. He was the captain of the Waikato team and uh, sort of an undersized eight number eight or six but <clears throat> the hardest working man in show business and so he just went you are james brown <laughs> come on down and uh and join the crusaders and he played so many minutes he never got a look in at the chiefs mm. um fetu douglas and then with christian leo willie he was sort of um bouncing around in the in your team the highlanders mm, right yeah he was in the squad christian leo willie in that uh super rugby final last year was almost man of the match he was Freaking outstanding. So, um, yeah, props to Razor and loose forwards to Razor. He knows how to pick them. Very nicely yeah. said. Uh, and you think some of those guys, they'll probably push on, right? Now Scott Robinson's like, well, I know, I'm, I like these guys. These are my boys that I've brought up and raised and hand-fed corn to make them nice and big. Oh, yeah, here we go. Here's Bruce. Yeah, it's beautiful. Well, that's right on cue, isn't it? Yeah. See how baby. You asked for it, and it was delivered about five minutes later, along oh, with some it. other audio I think I heard earlier sort of pipe into my ears. Oh, no, really? I mean, I shouldn't say, oh, no. Oh, yes. But um, my hometown, Bruce Springsteen. When I think entertainers, I think Bruce Springsteen, the boss. I think Jason Gunn, the son of the gun. When I had my first beer, Bruce Springsteen, born in the USA, was pretty much just on rotate repeat in and all the woolshed parties and barn parties and all that sort of stuff around the Waikato, Bruce Springsteen was pretty much what was just chucked on. Mm. And if anybody played, obviously ACDC had to be played at some point, and then Def Leppard, um, what's that? Hysteria? Hysteria. That's, that's, a, big that, that's mm -hmm. a big album? Yep. That was like, um, 
I mean, shit, I thought they were fully American. They're from Sheffield. <laughs> like, yeah. from, I can't believe that. They really are. That's the biggest surprise for me is like, wait, they're from Sheffield, <laughs> you know, where Sheffield Wednesday and all those, you know, northern. I think my biggest so- surprise Steve when it came to music, while we're off on this tangent, is when I found out that Push Push was Mikey Havoc. It really mm-hmm. uh, shocked yeah. me. And it was very late in the piece. I would have been, you know, in my late teens. And then someone was like, yeah, you know that po- you know that push push. That's that's Mikey Havoc from Havoc and Newsboy. He transforms, doesn't he, Mikey Havoc? Shout out to Mikey Havoc, very influential um, broadcaster. And um, but yeah, I don't know how we got onto. Oh, that's right, um, Bruce Springsteen. It's playing. a natural progression. Yeah, it is. Yeah. So uh, the gutting thing for the Crusaders is that Will Jordan is out with a shoulder injury yes. for, for the season. The whole so, season, six months. Yeah, and that is the headline. We, we don't lead with the headline. Mind you, have you ever clicked on a clickbait article lately where they... Singles in my area, that sort of thing? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Have you done that? Wow, you know, you just want to see where they are. That's disappointing because, you know, it's like, okay, we need addresses here, right? Yeah, and I always say, well, they're in my area, and then you click on it and it says they're in Swanson, and you're like, well, that's not really my area. Like, yeah. sure, it's West Auckland, the greater West Auckland region, but it's not close. And are they all congregating in Swanson, let's be honest? And just because they're single doesn't mean they're interested. Yeah. There's a lot of single people out there. Are they on the train going through Swanson is the question, but we really what they do now is they say um, something like uh, the movie that's taking whatever, Netflix by storm, mm. and you go, oh, okay, what's... Because you always want to get a recommendation for a good movie. And in the first 10 paragraphs, they don't mention the name of the movie because they want you to scroll down All the way this, down. this crappy freaking article. And it's like inverse journalism now. And so... Um, and I'm trying to sort of like rail against clickbait, really. It's like, let's get away from these singles in our area for, for once. Well, the great irony here is you sort of introduce a, a thought about this clickbait article and then you sort of haven't delivered on it. So you've really got us all on tender hooks waiting for you to, to deliver on the idea behind this clickbait. Yeah, what was it? No, it was, it was about a movie on Netflix and it was... Um, I thought you were about Will Jordan still. No, no, well, this is the thing. Like, Will Jordan is out for six months. That is the headline. I'm talking about we're like those articles, basically. Oh, yes. This podcast is exactly like that. You mean that's all there is to the story is uh, out for six uh, months? But, you know, other rugby podcasts would go... Hey, welcome to the show. Will Jordan, out for six months. Uh, yeah, right. Blah, blah, blah. I mean, we've talked about Bruce Springsteen yeah. at barn parties, okay? But, hey, we're getting to the point. Will Jordan is out for six months. That's massive. But, of course, in Razor's world, he's like, perfect. You look after that shoulder, yeah. and I'll just have you for the England test. And because a- that's, that's all Razor is really thinking. Okay, yeah, I don't get, you know full season Will Jordan but I'll take three week Will Jordan no worries yeah and it's a pre-existing condition it's not like he's something that he's yeah. done at training and blown his shoulder and also this is a guy who's had like a thousand concussions already in a short short career maybe just the six months on the sideline will do him some good he'll just let that brain sort of wobble around in the brain fluid and heal a bit more let the shoulder heal up and even give someone else a chance to shine down there for the Crusaders I mean it's not like they're shorter players yeah that, that's the thing I think um all Blacks wise, I know that Will Jordan would have really loved to have played fullback, and you know, I guess um, Razor's already sort of said that D Mac's got the inside running for the ten jersey. Uh, Bowden will come back and and give him some depth there, which I'm sure he'll gratefully um, accept. And it's the same with Adi Savier, I guess. You know, you get the World Rugby Player of the Year back. Um, he pretty much leapfrogs everybody uh, into into the starting lineup. Uh, but uh, the one good thing with uh, fullback is I was just watching Ruben Love before. Mm. Um, there's a young guy, Harry Godfrey. I know he's a, a smaller player. He's a little whippersnapper. But that's almost becoming a bit of a factor in rugby, you know? The little um, jack-in-the-box fullback just, you know, hovering around, just popping up wherever. Very tough to, to tackle because he's he's so much more agile given it's – He's about an 82 kg guy. Yeah, well, it's the sort of the, the D-Mac. He really sort of yeah. was the prototype. And, um, you know, you got Chesil and Colby for the Springboks who sort of fills a very similar role. Just the absolute energizer bunny who you cannot beat down no matter how hard you try to, to well, beat him down. League have always done it, right? Billy Slater um, and then uh, oh, before him, Matty Bowen. They're, they're quite happy to chuck a little um, <laughs> a wee fella out the back at fullback because they know... Wherever he turns up in the back line, he's going to be hard to handle. So 
And they, um, there must be insane people. I've thought this about D-Mac a few times, that you know, he, he could play under 85 kg rugby if he wants to. He sprints at the line so far. He just has no thought about self-preservation because if he gets got, like let's say Offatonga Fassi or one of these big boys, mm. really lines them up, he'd, 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 he'd die. He'd become deceased. It's a, it's a big collision, isn't it, to think about when you've got a big offer uh, charging around. Speaking of Offatonga Fassi, what an awkward interview. What a great interview, I guess we could call it. Awkward Tuanga Fassi. Yes, it was <laughs> awkward Tuanga Fassi. It really was. It was, um, as we mentioned earlier, we were commentating. The ACC was called up to commentate on New Zealand Rugby Plus, I believe this platform means it R Plus, uh, which is a great honour. Uh, you, myself, G Lane, uh, doing the commentary for one of the preseason games, the Chiefs versus the Blues at Oniwa Domain. And it was a hell of an occasion. A lot of people there. And we're sort of given, what, free reign to do what we must, what we thought would be fun to do. They, as they do say, inject some fun into it. Uh, and then they tell you all the things that you can't do afterwards. But still, it was nice to get to do. But they were still running a fairly typical setup when it came to talking to the actual players. There was still a media liaison who, there who they kind of wanted you to go through. And we'd talked to a couple of players before the big man offer came wandering down the sideline. And when he did... You were just behind me, and your eyes sort of lit up, and I saw you say, hey, ask Offer, ask Offer how golf went. Today, the Today. on the day. And he's injured, of course, not playing um, due to an injury, so there's no way he should have been playing golf. And you- At Takapuna, which is like about, it's uh, two, 100 metres from mm. where, we're, where the rugby game was, so quite quite close. Yeah, and so I just thought, you know, bugger it, McConey's giving me the green light here. He has a pre-existing relationship with Offer, who I don't know at all. I'll put that out there as well. So I just sort of walked up to him and said, Offer, how was golf, mate? And dropped the mic into his face and he looked startled and just said, is this live? Which is not the answer you want at any stage. During a live broadcast, that is going out on NZR Plus to many, many countries across the world, including the big dogs. I think it's been shown to the Silver Lake group who are the investors behind NZR. I know. I've sent them a clip of our commentary going, this is what we're doing um, Cool, eh? And I'm just thinking, the Silver Lake guys are going, okay, so Beavis and Butthead have moved to frickin' New Zealand. Really. It was a bit like that. But I think we, I think we pulled it off in the end. I, I, I think it went well. There was been a lot of feedback on well, the feedback let's, let's, still, let's talk about that feedback. But let's just get back, back Before we get, uh, move on, after Offa Tonga Farsi said, is this live? I don't think you confirmed whether it was live. You just sort of walked, you just retreated like Homer Simpson into the hedge. I did. And, and that was the end I of the I actually interview. had a, I had a panic because I could see the media liaison guy walking towards me out of the corner oh, right. of my eye. I oh. saw him approaching. So I backed away and just said, yes, can confirm. He said it was good. And I That's did walk it. out of the camera shot. Um, it was a fiasco. I didn't know what was on camera, what they were taking, what they weren't. I didn't even know if we were on screen at the time. So there was a bit going on, but uh, it really was one of those interviews where after you think, ah, it could have gone better. No, well, I thought it was it's going straight into our Voyager Media Awards um, entry. So, Well, while we're on the topic, James McConey, you have done a lot in your storied sports broadcasting career. What is the one interview you've done where afterwards you had the heebie-jeebies and you thought, you know, I've done a, I know I've done a few where afterwards you go, oh, that was an awkward one. There must be a couple for you that have stood out as... And it might be through no fault of your own. own. It could also be maybe you screwed the pooch. Are there any interviews, regardless of rugby, regardless of sport, where afterwards you've thought, man, that did not go well? I did have one interview with um, uh, Dame Valerie Adams where uh, I was asking her about her former coach uh, coaching her rivals, that she went and um, ended up coaching the Chinese shot putters. And... um, Dame Val didn't like that, but to me it was like the same question you ask Richie McCaw, like, oh, Robbie Deans is overcoaching the Wallabies, you mm. know. Um, you know, you've got your, your, the guy, he knows everything's now uh, up against you. But, yeah, it just, it just led to awkwardness, and we almost had to, I think, um, a couple of years later, there was a piece of cord, you know. We played, um, uh, what would you call it, uh, what was it, basketball, a celebrity charity basketball game together. Yep. And all was good, so we did need to sort of clear it. clear the air. Did you bring say, it up? Did you mention it? Yeah, she goes. She said, "I don't know what was hap- happening at the time." You know, she was kind of like um, in the zone, and yeah, and just yeah. So I just sort of took it as like, "Oh well, 
We're back, baby. Nice. Because I've always got on. She is awesome, Dame Val. Mm. And she's done amazing things for Crowd Goes Wild. Like, she would. I remember gave, gave her a, a watermelon once and she shot put it over my head and just things like that. Like, she was always up for a bit of fun. But I think it's sometimes you when you ask a. Um, uh, a question that's more normal and you're the crowd goes wild person they almost get a bit shocked and go wait a second aren't we just going to do the yeah are we doing the, the silly the goofy thing f- silly goofy that sounds too much like a like a normal question and I think um, yeah that was one that stood out but I love Dame Val and that was that was a tough one I just remember going okay things just should have shut down after that yeah it's tough when you don't yeah really quite right I mean Artie Savia was asked that same question famously in the airport about uh, what he thinks about Someone coaching the Wallabies. Oh, uh, Steve Hansen. And he said, I don't really, I don't care. Yeah. I think that admittedly he'd just come off the plane after losing the Rugby World Cup final, so he probably had a bit going on, but did hit them with a big, I don't care. Well, the Steve Hansen thing is, is interesting because he went to help Eddie Jones just as a mate. I don't know. I assume it was a paid gig though, mm, right? Surely. Yeah. And, um, and so he is helping one of our biggest rivals before the Rugby World Cup. And I'm pretty sure people in New Zealand rugby were a bit miffed, shall we say. But it was quite interesting how the line was, oh, no, it's all right, we know about it, and, you know, I'm comfortable, and it's it's fine. Mm. You know, I think Fozzie said that. I think deep down, Fozzie's not saying that. And I wish they had deep, said that. Deep, do we, can, can, you almost need to say, can we do a deep, deep, deep down yeah, answer? Deep down. From you? Deep down. I mean, I know that's the answer that you're running with, but deep down, what the hell, you know? Yeah, when, when you when close guy, your eyes before bed, you must be like, ah, oh, fuck it. Come on. Come yeah. on, Shag. Just a little bit. of Come on, doing? Shag. Come on. And it's, it's okay. They've got to let their feelings out. And I if think. you say you come on, Shag, before bedtime, well, you know what that means. And, I mean, speaking of people letting their feelings out, we, as we mentioned, we were commentating – the preseason game, and it was put online on the Super Rugby platform, the All Blacks platform, and let's just say the AC reached a group of people who they might not have reached in previous broadcasts, and it's really put a cat amongst the pigeons. Can I describe those people as, I'm not even going to go with boomers, I'm going to call them hairy hard outs. They are. They're, they're hairy hard outs, right? So these people live, breathe, Snort rugby, mm-hmm. everything about them, and they want to know stuff, and they want the the good oil, and they want to be able to say, "I saw this guy in preseason, geez, looking good," and blah, 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 you know. And then Nick minute, there's G Lane, myself, and you, and Tony Lyle sideline, and they were some of them weren't too happy about it. Well, and the thing that annoys me is if they actually took a second to listen, they would hear what they want to hear. They still hear the good stuff. You guys know your footy, you know what's going on. You're still delivering the actual commentary, just in, a bit, in an alternative way, which the clue is in the name. Here's some of the, um, the feedback. I'm flicking through the old Instagram here. We have one where someone just says, bring back Carl Tenana, which I'm not sure if he's talking about in the commentary booth or on the field. Hard to, hard to tell there. Oh, I love Carl Tenana as a commentator. He's gone to World Rugby, by the way. He loves having things on his head. That's what I know about Carl. Um, don't know him personally, but we've had some nice interactions online. And, and at he the loves a supermarket hat. in Seattle Two Peninsula. I have seen him there a few times. Yes. He loves a hat. He obviously loves a dread. He loves a wide rimmed glasses. Sometimes he has so many things on his head when he's doing the yeah. post match interviews. You think, mate, just let your. He's a good looking guy. I don't know why. It feels like he needs to cover it all up. Another from this is from. Bear in mind, this is from Lucas eight two seven three nine one eight three, who has precisely two followers. Zero posts, but he's weighed in. With worst choice ever, you guys lost a lot of rugby fans today. Poor, unprofessional decision. A disgrace. Yeah, Lucas. Um, yeah. It's hard to please Lucas 8237451. Um, no a, profile picture. Yeah. Oh, the no profile. Fi- that's the thing. The alias no profile person. Um, I'm just I, not convinced he exists. I really, I, I don't know how bots work, but yeah. can you train a bot just to put out you know, it's pretty well written criticism, to be fair. But who is this person? Is this has to be a bot? Do you know what? You get abuse from people with those with the no um, profile pick thing every now and then. I remember at the Halbergs one year, I interviewed the uh, New Zealand under seventeen women's team because they had this amazing result. They came third in the world, and I said, "We've got to get them on 
the broadcast, it was such a great moment. It was, if, if people might remember, there's a penalty shootout. And Elite, the goalie, made this amazing save. And the thing that he sort of had beef with was that I said, oh, all the goal scorers are over here. They're from the Waikato, you know, like, um, Kelly Brown and Grace Wisniewski or whatever. And, and he sort of went, oh, you can't single people. I don't know what it was, but he lost the plot on, on Twitter. And I looked at it, and he wasn't, um, you know, Lucas8237, blah, blah, blah. He was the goalkeeping coach for, like, the Phoenix or some proper, like, football yeah. person. I'm like, but acting like a real keyboard warrior, and I didn't reply, but I felt like saying, well, if it wasn't for me, they wouldn't have been on the broadcast. Mm. I made sure that we got the what was one of the great sporting moments and the best result we've ever had in a FIFA World Cup on the broadcast made sure we spoke to the captain and others and gave them the full sort of five minutes. And they're still not happy, you yeah. know what I mean? It was uh, the only thing that I think it was was the segue of saying, here's the goal scorers, you know. And they are the goal scorers. It's a, they are. It's it was, the important, it's, sport is all about marketing when it comes to yeah. getting people interested in it, and that's the sort of thing that people can latch on to. Yeah, but I mean, I think I did speak to Annalise, the keeper, as well, and we had um, that, a lot of them now are all in the... Um, in the football fern, so they're, they're just one of those teams that have just kept on giving uh, New Zealand sport, really. Um, but yes, there's, it's hard to please a lot of people, even when you do something that's pretty much garden variety. Like, well, hey. you know who you can't please, Alistair Boyd. This is a DM. He slipped into the DMs here, which I think is a whole nother level of abuse because it's not. I think it's pretty personally, and I get abused online for um, do comedy, do all this sort of stuff especially when the project was on TV, and I get abused, and I, for the most part, thought it was pretty funny. It's nice for people to take notice, and they'll, sometimes it is genuinely funny. They'll, they'll say a, they'll, a roast of you, and you're like, yeah, that's a pretty good joke. You've, you've got me dead to rights there, and I'll have a laugh. I uh, always remember seeing, someone saying this guy looks like he br- closes his eyes when he brushes his teeth, which I still think is funny. That's a funny, that's a funny put down. Uh, but when you're sliding into the DMs, you know that that's not for public consumption. You're just getting it off your chest directly to the person. And Alistair Boyd, was so fired up by your commentary that he said the ACC is like a bunch of children in broadcasting school trying to be funny, repeating the same one line as about gingers in the sun, or trying to be original by tacking cheese onto the end of Stephen Perifetta's name again and again. So much potential to be a bit more witty or intelligent. Huge opportunity missed. I wonder if you really think about what you're saying before you say it. Ruins a game of footy with the immaturity. Um, you know how like sometimes you go, there's... There is a sort of element of um, truth in, in some feedback. Yes. Yeah, there's, there's a lot of truth there from <laughs> Alistair Boyd. So I'd actually just say, yes, I get it. But when it comes to a nickname, I, I mean, I guess what they what he doesn't understand is we're taking that name and and making it as the the standard name. You yes. know, we're sort of it's a it's a replacement. We're not. Oh uh, yeah, I guess it is repeating the same joke if you no, look at it that not, way. No, but it's not. It's not repeating the same joke over and over. Well, you are technically repeating the same are, joke. But, but there are some jokes that the more you say them, the funnier they get. And I think Stephen Perifetta cheese is one of those jokes. The more you hear it, the more you laugh. The more I laugh. Okay, well, what, what I'm going to do is we're going to take a little break. We'll come back soon and we'll talk more about Super Rugby and, and bad feedback. Welcome back, and we're joined by G Lane and James McConey. Hey, guys, did you know that as we get to the start of the Super Rugby Pacific season for 2024, our mates at Two Degrees are on the hunt to find each super team's ultimate super fan? Did you know that? that? You, that's you, James McConey. It would be, um, although I did say I, I felt like when someone said to me the other day, can you get the real fans get a photo? I felt a little bit put out by that. <laughs> well, speaking of the real fans, if you are a huge Huge fan of Super Team since ages ago, or if you know all the player nicknames where your supporters kit everywhere, head to the games, even if it's freezing or pouring, then you might be the super fan they're looking for. Two degrees that you could be that person. Tell them why you're the super fan to win an epic VIP game day experience and be immortalized into a super fan emoji. That's a super fan emoji. I say that again, a super fan emoji. By entering yourself as a super fan on the Two Degrees website, just text FAN to 3236 to get the link. That's FAN to 32. Three, six. Now, G Lane, you've just wandered yep. into the studio. We've yep. just been talking about the rabid abuse that you received after <laughs> your debut for NZR Plus um, from the <laughs> loyal rugby fans. And before we move on to look at this season, would you like to defend yourself in any way? No. No. You, you got what was written on the tin. That's an alternative commentary. Um, the, the good part about it is that the NZR Plus, who hired us to do that 
uh, commentary. Yeah. Loved it. Well, look. Absolutely loved it. I've never seen so much social media pop off as a result. I mean, they're not uh, clipping TJ or anyone else, are they, and, and getting some bites from overseas. Sure, there's going to be some haters. Sure, um, I got called a f- uh by someone in no, the South No, you got called Island. a cringe f- Cringe f- And yeah. was that as part of the commentary or was it just in the supermarket? No, that was just um, out on the outside the studio. Actually. It does seem quite hard <laughs> to come in with some aggressive homophobia based oh. on, like you, you're you actually doing something worse than the thing you're criticising at that point. Yeah, and in one of them, I love replying to them. That's my favourite My favorite thing to do is replying to trolls. And you can see as soon as you go into their profile that they've set up a burner account immediately. They've made no posts, got no followers, and they've set up a burner so they can never go. Do you take that as a compliment that someone's yeah. gone through the process of setting up a burner account? Yeah, they, they, I do. You know, they've had to do a login, they've had to reply to emails, maybe do a, a third-party yeah. sort of uh, optimization or whatever it is when you've got to get your phone out and your laptop just so that they can call you the F word. Yeah, and there's the guy Lucas362159 or whatever. Oh, Lucas. Yeah, he's talking about him. He's We've one of our favorite, about Lucas. favorite guys. The thing is with Lucas, I said, love you, babes, kiss, kiss. And he goes, get with the times. It's 2024. And I'm like, why? Well, I didn't think there's anything more 2024 than a man loving a man. And uh, he I didn't like that. Transgender, you could probably twist that in there. That'd be more 2024. Yeah, that's um, true. Uh, I, here's an idea for a TV show. So... <laughs> Uh, all those people with burner accounts, still traceable though, aren't they? Yeah. Because oh, yeah. there, there's a, what do you call it? Is it the ISDN or whatever? You know, there's, there's an address. There's a web the IP, address. The IP, IP address. The IP yeah. address here. So then you go, IP address, tra- G Lane tracks them down and confronts them in a fair go type style. <laughs> yeah. A doorstep uh, them. Doorstep them. And, and then just finds out what they're all about. And we, and we do stats, um, predictions on what their job is, where they live in the basement yeah. um, of their mum's place or yes. whatever it is, we just do a kind of like a little leaderboard prediction. So we're back a bit like at Target when they go, oh, he's going through the drawers. Uh-oh. Oh, no. Uh-oh. no, no, no. Oh, no, he's, he's going to be sniffing. He's, sniffing. he's sniffing. Uh-oh. He's on the sniff. Uh-oh. He's on the sniff. But we, so we do that and we go, what is going on here? And so when you go into the home and you see, uh-oh, there's a lot – to unpack here. You well, know? I think that's an absolute winner. I'd like to see that the ACC sort of redemption round, you could call it. And a- ACC w- investigates. Yeah, mm-hmm. ACC investigates and you head out and find the people that, that are calling you the F word online and, and just sort of say, hey man, what's going on? I think it'd be some nice resolution. I think in the end, you could probably put together a little posse of these people. Yeah, I think I think it's, it would be a lot sadder than we think it'll be. I think we call it... <laughs> it'll be like you go, oh. oh no, when no. we call it G-Lane, IP on you. <laughs> The IP on you. Yeah. I think this is some good stuff. I see Joe Jury, who is producing this, furiously writing this down right now. Well, good. the thing is, if, if Joe Jury tracked down every person that threatened him with <laughs> oh, ungodly no. things, he wouldn't He wouldn't have any time to do anything. Well, we'd have a tour of India. For yeah, he would get That's a, a, a lovely trip of, of <laughs> yeah. Mumbai there yeah. as he tracks down the people who he's defamed or have defamed him. No, defamed him. He's All he's done is put out, criticise Coley or just... Oh, don't drag that sort of... Coley. We don't need to be criticising yeah. Brett Coley yeah. on the show. Champagne rugby no, we podcast, don't. This is true. Uh, so, um, yeah. Can I maybe just mention that in that game, I thought you did a sterling job, G Lane. Yes. Uh, we didn't have, we couldn't actually see the ground, which is weird. <laughs> we we're at the ground, but we could only see like about 10 metres of, of people stampeding past every yeah. now and then. But of those people who stampeded past, how good did Caleb Clark look? And also, Malachi Rampling, 19 year old loose forward for the Chiefs. Don't know what they're going to do with him because he seems. Too young to be out there in the forwards, but he looks amazing. And you got some feedback from uh, your mate Caleb Clark. I uh, look, yeah, look, I think he wants to move on from Jab of the Butt. Uh, he's lost a bit of weight, mm-hmm. um, and he like he's a Star Wars fan, and mentioned that you know Jab of the Hutt's his least favourite character well, on that. Everyone oh, yeah, just enough. likes Jab of the Hutt. No one, no one's watching Star Wars cheering on Jab. No. Like, Where's the, the spin-off guy. for Jab of the Hutt though? Yeah, come on, a- Disney. Come on, let's go see the hut. Let's let's go to the hut. And it's him in his younger years when he was quite buff and he was quite good looking and he was a real lady killer. He's yeah. got Before the cum he gutters. let himself go. He has got cum gutters, but they're just rolls. But the thing is, he's, if Jab of the Hut with cum gutters would be something to behold. Well, that's Disney, the name of the show. shit, we've got some Jab with cum gutters. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine telling Disney if you got in the room with George Lucas and stuff and you went, yeah, I know. Yeah, just think about it. Jabber with cum gutters. Come on, guys. I've got three words for you. Jabber with cum gutters. <laughs> but I must admit, look, he's he's lost a bit of weight. He's looking in great great shape. Mm. Is Caleb Clark? But he's still got a great behind. 
He and does. I, I can't ignore that great behind. It is genetics. He's inherited it from a Ronnie. He also tucks himself in constantly. He loves yep. a high short. Yeah. He wears a short very high. And so it does accentuate the buttons. Should we, should we call him Caleb Kardashian? That's Caleb quite Kardashian good. is yeah. very good. good. That yeah. is good. Because... He, I can't. You can't ignore that, and it's not a bad thing. And that we all know. That Clark Dashian, because he's Clark and he dashes. Oh yeah. Anyway, anyway, we're getting. It's that's where the power comes from. We all know that. You look at and um, he hasn't lost the power. You look at sprinters. Everyone. They've all got and you know cricket fast bowlers. They've all got a big, great, big ass because yeah. that is where the power comes from. So it was never anything derogatory. It was always like. He's got a great butt. And it's not unprecedented, is it? You've rescinded nicknames that the players yeah. have reached out before. I know Aaron from Distribution didn't like his previous name. And well, he didn't reach out. He, he, basically, he, he doorstepped me. He doorstepped, uh, you. he doorstepped me on a bus. And he's such a nice guy, Aaron Smith, that he was saying that his mum listens and, you know, his, his <laughs> nickname was Dick Pick and then it was after David. And he was like, yeah, it's the two things that I fucked up, you know. Like, I yeah, really the worst bad moment about. in his life. Yeah, yeah. He's sort of Reminded being, every time. But my new Scotty Stevens like, get out of here, Nuggy. You, you, those are two things. You actually did them, okay? You can't deny you didn't do them. He's like, oh, yeah, I know, but it's kind of like, and I was like, okay. And meanwhile, I'd, I'd been thrown under the bus by Matt Heath because he basically just put me in front of Aaron. And he goes, Aaron wants to tell you something. And then ran off. Like a oh, massive coward. Yeah, yeah that is. <laughs> um, so yeah, we did. And we Aaron from distribution, working alongside Ben from accounts. That kind of worked. Uh, and we, we've, you know, we've had our fun. So look, I mean, uh, Clark Kardashian. Is Clark Kardashian still, still recognises the fact that he's Caleb got a Clark Kardashian. Yeah, he's got a great behind. Yeah. He does. And I can't ignore that in commentary. It's right there. It is in front of us. It's a mm. thing of beauty. He also has a very nice sex tape as well. I imagine. Yeah, I reckon he's called it'd be Caleb Clark Kardashian. Is yeah. that? We might have to look into that one, try to hunt out. If you do have it, if anyone's got one of Caleb Clark, feel free to send that in. Hasn't everyone got one now? Has I mean, all professional rugby players got one just ready to go? Surely. There must be on the cloud. I'm sure there's a couple of versions. Yeah, because I mean, any PR person with their salt has already pre-recorded any sex tape ready to go. Well, speaking of not? sex tapes, G-Lane, uh, you'll be unable to make one this Friday. It's a very busy day for the ACC. Yes. <laughs> the Super Rugby it kicks off. In full gusto, the Chiefs against the Crusaders. Pretty decent first game, to oh, be fair. Cracker. Um, Can't and wait. That is at the same time as the f- second T20 yep. in the Chapel Hadley series. Controversial playing for the Chapel Hadley series yep. in T20s. But nonetheless, that's at Eden Park. So a huge after or evening of sport. How is this going to be juggled? You are the boss of the ACC. That must have taken some divvying up of, of resources. Yeah, not too bad. T20s aren't too bad. But uh, the rugby is myself and James. And that'll be on Sky Sport 9 and uh, iHeart, ACC iHeart 2. So we've got two channels on iHeart. Um, and the cricket will be on um, iHeart through ACC as well. And on, the, on that call, I think it's um, uh, Jason Hoyt, Ben Hurley, and Ben Boyce on so that one. A bit of a do after that, I guess, if both results go well. You guys yeah. will sort of pull your resources. and um... Well, the, hopefully the rugby's over a bit earlier, isn't it? Rugby's usually over by about nine, isn't it? Yeah, nine. that's right. They yeah. wrap it up. And the cricket on, on will go on to about 10.30. So we'll have another hour and a half where we can kind of cross-pollinate. Take over the airways. Well, yeah. rugby's going to be faster this year. I had a chat to Ben O'Queef the other day. He, was, he came into Sky uh, and uh, gave a presentation about the laws that they're going to be looking at. And they, they obviously got the shot clock and all those sorts yeah. of things. They're going to speed up anyone taking a knee. It's like, get out of it. Unless you're bleeding out of your eye socket or yeah. there's something really bad, off you go. And so they're, they're doing that. They've got um, oh, just general kind of like scrum stuff that's going to help, hopefully. Although a reset does give us a chance to have a cup of tea and, um, was there and any, get, a, get a sponsor in there. Was there any talk about the third umpire, whatever it's called in, in rugby, TMO, I believe, yes. about constantly going back up to them like happened in the World Cup? Because that seemed to slow everything down and, and was the worst part of the World totally. Cup. Totally. Did, did he he said, he said the refs are going to take control. Um, he's going to make most of the calls. He's going to try. If he sees a, a try, he's going, to, he's going to try and award as many, you know, most – almost every single try he sees and just lets the the TMO have a look during the 90 seconds before the conversion is taken and that's pretty much it. So there's going to be a lot more of that and uh, yeah, the, the TMO will not be coming in uh, to try and decide everything for the ref. Um, apart from obviously foul play, foul play you can go back yeah. quite a fair way but everything else like they... They messed up in that Rugby World Cup final where they went back for that knock-on. Yeah, it was at the line out. phases. Yeah, it was a knock-on, though. But anyway, so um, I don't know. Barnsley let it go, though. He was happy with it. Straight down, which mm. you don't often see a lot. No. But anyway, um, so so there's there's definitely that as well. There's another rule, an offside rule. I don't. I actually wasn't sure. It's a bit like league, you know, where you kick the ball and there's 
players are hid, but they have to stop until they're put on side or until the opposition yes. run five metres. And so there were always lots of people hovering. Just w- wandering. W- wandering. Yeah. And you weren't allowed to wander forward, but you could sort of stay, hold your ground and they do this kind of thing, like, and they're waiting for the five metres, and that was a huge advantage. Now, those guys need to be put on side. Yeah, the kicker so, is, is the one and only. Yeah, so... Um, so no one from behind the kicker? It has to be the kicker? The kicker himself has to be the one to put them on. No, 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 no. They'll... Um, People behind the kicker, okay. they'll send out a flyer, um, like who a chaser, and a so the chaser, the chaser will basically go and um, put that guy inside. But the, that player will probably be looking around for the chaser just to make sure that he's um, legally on side now. They're hoping it's going to promote more counter attacks, which it could. But I said <laughs> in the meeting, I went, so it'll give the um, the receiving team a chance to kick a fifty twenty. Too, because they'll be able to get right close to the yeah. halfway line yes. and just pick their spot, you know. But then they say, well, that'll keep two defenders back defending the 50-22, so you know what I mean? like. And so it's this game of chess out there that you sort of, I guess you'd probably notice if you go and watch it live, but not necessarily on the telly. Is it That, that is to avoid the aerial ping pong, isn't it? Is that, They're is trying that is? to avoid yeah. the aerial ping pong, but then I was thinking, well, a lot of players would just think, you know, and this is going back to a lot of teams that even watching Six Nations, any um, decent a player with a decent boot on him who's reasonably close to the halfway loves to go for a 50-22. Yeah. It's kind of a win-win because if you get it into a good spot um, on the angle, even if they mark it, they've got the shittest um, angle to find touch anyway. Yeah. So your net gain is good. And if they don't um, catch it or if it is a 50-22, you get a freaking attacking line-out. Yeah. So, so this is the thing. I think the 50-22... Is um yeah I'm not sure if it if it's the greatest rule but yeah I agree I've I was yeah. bagging it last year a lot as well I feel like it's the, yeah the skill required to do it isn't as big like a forty twenty I know it's only a little bit further back but it does make it a, oh, a, it's a, big a lot harder yeah. than yeah, in a, a fifty twenty two you can just sort of ping it in and like you said you sort of win no matter what the skill it t- takes to do it isn't worth the, the end result well, well you can accidentally do a fifty twenty two I think Peter Amani dropped the ball on his foot you know to do yeah. a grabber in that test series last year and it was a fifty twenty two and everyone's like oh what a genius I'm like yeah that looked just like any forward just having <laughs> yeah. a hack at the ball you know um. Is the only reason they haven't got forty twenty is because they don't want to copy league? Yeah. Is any reason? Also, it's not like it's a well, it is marked with a ten meter line, but it's not one of the main marks, is what I always right. sort of thought. Is that you need that fifty, the twenty two? There's only really unless it's a twenty two, twenty two, which would never be used. Well, well, the thing about kicking the ball from the fifty meter is you can really place it and get it to a point where you're not. Um, like the, the the defenders on the sideline, even if they are way back in the twenty two, defending it. They still have to, you know. There's still a bit of uh, yeah. work there to be done to get rid of the ball and get a decent angle to to get their kick away. And of course, it's going to be a kick. So I think it'll be interesting to see what the more aerial ping pong. It, it might change a little bit. We'll see. Um, and then on Saturday, we've got Highlanders, your beloved mm. Highlanders versus Moana. We certainly do, Highlanders. Uh, Highlanders. Hawala. The Highlanders play Moana Pacifica down in Dunedin. And very excited for that game, actually. The Highlanders have been looking good in the preseason, a couple yep. of wins on the trot. And I think they'll maintain that into the season and probably win every game this year. And you've got the zoo will be in fine form because it's O-Week. O-Week in Dunedin. And it's still one of my great memories, or not memories, I should say, is going and watching the Highlanders play the Crusaders in my O-Week in first year. She yep. had, they played afterwards, played to the terrace at Carisbrook. Ugh. And it was truly one of those nights that will live in infamy. I've actually talked to... John too good about it since because you could kind of see while he was on stage he was having a good time and he mentioned it a few times I think he actually said on stage I thought this was going to be shit but this is fucking amazing <laughs> and I talked to him recently about it and he's like yeah I remember it perfectly he's like I was dreading it all day playing to a whole bunch of rugby drunk heads. rugby heads they're not my crowd they're not going to be there but he said but the terrace is amazing because it's like you're playing to a mosh pit but it's all tilted up so you yeah. can see everyone as they go up so you can see the whole thing they rise up before you everyone was going ape shit oh, the nice. time of his life and yeah, hopefully there'll be an occasion like that down in, in Dunedin and yeah. the, the new batch of first years who are wandering down there with their school books and their course related costs can yeah. really have a good old do and as, as we've noticed the last few seasons you know there'll be like um, Courtney and Ruby and you know all the all the girls down there from usually from Auckland yeah and yeah. they're like and they're making their parents proud in the uh, 
in the zoo. Yeah, they will do a few salt and pepper grinders in the <laughs> in the zoo as well. You do tend to see a couple of them going very deep. It does worry me to to be honest. Um, you got a got a punt on? Have you placed your punt for the, this week? We and, certainly haven't, yeah. but I I think well with you guys both being Chiefs fans and both commentating the game on Friday night, some would say that's problematic and yeah. sort of raises some issues about bias and having two people calling the game who are both supporting the same team sort of makes the whole commentary a bit slanted. But maybe because of that, do we put it on the Crusaders uh, to, to get up or some form of winning just to... I don't know I could bring myself to it, but it's your money. You've got a $100 bonus bet to uh, make the game day good punt. You could go uh, for a multi. I'd, I'd almost go for a Sean Stevenson try and oh, uh, yeah. multi that with something. You know, anytime like, try scorer? Yeah. Stevenson, anytime try scorer. That's I think bad. it's good money. Well, I'm happy to leave it in your capable hands, okay. McConey, being the, the chief oh, the chief's okay. Yep. Anytime try scorer, I'm, I'm down with that. Um, Shoot a Stevenson, it's going to be a big year for him. Yeah. And how confident are you in the Chiefs winning in general? Uh, I know the Chiefs look to be in a good position, but you lose Sam Kane and Brody Retallick from the four pack, there will be uh, a dip. There has to be. They, they pretty much um, ran, the, yeah. ran the whole thing. Uh, Sam Kane, incredible defender, concrete shoulders. Yeah, you've got Luke Jacobson, American dad, coming in, just yeah. slotting in, which is great. God, he's, cut, but he's chiseled out of steel, isn't he? He is. So I, I'm, I'm feeling, feeling pretty uh, bullish about the, the Chiefs and also the fact that, you know, you got D-Mac and also backup from Josh Iwani and yeah. also backup from Josh Jacob. It's not too bad. Just every position, even halfback, right? It's, it's, yeah. it's tough to, to pick. And Tom uh, Florence and the Machine yeah. looking good at number seven. Yeah, and then you've got uh, Akoi and Tupu Vai in the, in the locks. It's not, they're not a couple of kind of journeymen, are they? No. So I'm a couple of Chiefs fans here. Oh, so sounding very, so 13 plus confident, you reckon? I don't know about 13 plus, oh, but, here we I, go. I, but I, I, this is also a very new look Crusaders team as well. There's a lot mm. missing from them. There's a lot of rebuilding rebuild, going on. No razor. You mm-hmm. know, it's a new era. Uh, and I'm keen to start that era with a loss. What, what a tough act to follow, though. Rob Penny oh. going in after Razor. Is that, is that kind of why he got the, got the job? Everyone's like, I'm not going there yeah. seven in a row or whatever it was. Yeah. So, like, uh, well, well, there's no of, expectations, I guess. You're like, you know. Oh, yeah, like, yeah, there's that. There is yeah. that if they get one. But, um, Speaking of the Century 21 mob of Red Devils, Rob Penny, what an absolute stalwart of yeah. that side with the brokenest schnoz you will ever see. That nose is an absolute waking nightmare. I imagine he absolutely tears it up in the bedroom when he's snoring. Yes, of course. And oh, right. Also, when he's he does have the look of someone who might be, might be traveling quite well, though, doesn't he? Oh, you, know? you can only imagine. Yeah. He's a big boy or a big rangy he's number a big ra- He's rangy with the, rangy. With the ears. And the, yeah, there's definitely some BDE. He's got the big dick energy, yeah. old Rob Penny. Which is what Let, you let's call it. He's, fo- got, he's got it. To follow uh, Razor, you've got to have a, a huge amount of BDE. If yeah. they put that in the situations vacant, it's like then you, you know, it's like st- all the people stepping forward, they have to drop their pants in the interview. <laughs> and, uh, and they go, yep. That's fine. Okay, that yeah, is yeah. very HRE though, by saying, "Hey, we want to compare genitalia to get this job." Yeah, look, oh, I mean, I mean, it's, 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 it's the Canterbury way, though, isn't yeah, it? It is. It's, Things it, are different in the South Island. It would be problematic in the North, yes. Yeah. Well, <laughs> we'll let you, we'll update you with exactly what the TAB game day good pun is. But I think Scooter Stevenson to score a try and maybe yeah. a one to twelve win sounds like uh, what you're leaning towards. But I don't want you to walk you down the garden path. I think you want to. Make that one up yourself. Well, but we can stick it on the Highlanders if you want. Uh, the Landers. The, the Landers. To, oh, yeah, well, to Landers 13 plus. That's, can I, goes um, saying. before your game, uh, I'm, I think there's a game over in Perth. There is. Now, the only thing is, is what, what's the local time there? It's, it's, um, or is that just it's a late midnight. night game? Okay, yeah. It's a midnight kickoff, I believe. Here in New Zealand. Okay, so it's a Friday night ga- game in Perth. I think the Hurricanes looked amazing in, in pre-season. Super C get great barrier refi, unbelievable yeah. tries, like goosing around fullbacks and that. Just uh, Peter Larkai, uh, the loose forwards off the chain, and then even off the bench, Harry Godfrey, the little whippersnapper fullback we've been mm-hmm. talking about, yeah. little tricky little full, fullbacks. He looked good too, and Ruben Love, star of the Black Clash, oh, just yeah. can do no wrong. Hottest man alive. Yeah. Shit, he's a dreamboat. He really is that... Beautiful complexion. He's just an absolute hunk. I can't get behind the Hurricanes, though. Well, I can't I, do it. I don't know why. Maybe well, it's because my father-in-law is such a big fan. Yeah, it is. They're a tough team to support. They were actually <laughs> the very first year of Super Rugby. Uh, they were the team that I thought I would follow, and then I watched them for a year and thought, you know, I'm going to throw my lot on with the Crusaders. 
who I also bailed out on. So I've nearly gone and supported every team, but I was a tiny child, so give me a little bit of credit here. So um, to wrap things up, G-Lane, we're here on yes. Friday night. Yep. Where the kickoff is 7 o'clock. Seven o'clock. Yep. Um, we'll be on Sky Channel 59. 59 on your box and 9 on your, on your app yep. uh, on your Sky Sport now. So, yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah, you just have to just scroll up a little bit. People will go, you on Sky, I couldn't find you. Yeah, and we'll, we'll also be back on Saturday as well with yes, that yes. Highlanders game. Yep. Everything covered. You can listen to ACZ. And feel free to really rip us rip us out in the comments yeah. afterwards. If yeah, you're yeah. Lucas 21896123121. Yeah, yeah, especially Lucas. Yeah. Bless you, Lucas. Thoughts and prayers. And what a treat to be back. The Champagne Rugby Podcast will be back every week uh, with more of this sort of carry on. So if you enjoyed it, well, you're, we've got you covered. If you hated it, leave it, let us know in the comments and we'll see you next time.